Hi, third grade. Welcome to day two of reading. Yesterday, you enjoyed listening to Mrs. Growth introduce you to our mentor text called The Absent Author. And she talked to you about how our job as the detectives reading this mystery is to pay attention to who might be a crime solver, who might be a suspect, and what is the actual mystery going on here. To start today, I'm going to continue reading for you chapter two. We know that our four main characters that we've been introduced to, to, introduced to so far include Dink, Josh, Wallace Wallace, and Ruth Rose. Chapter two. Dink raced into the book nook. Josh and Ruth Rose were right behind him. They found three seats behind Tommy Tomko and Eddie Carini. Dink plopped his backpack on the floor. The clock over the cash register said three minutes after 11. Where is he? Dink whispered to Tommy Tomko. Tommy turned around. Beats me. He's not here yet. And Mr. Paskey looks worried. What's going on? Ruth Rose said. Dink told her and Josh what Tommy had said. Paskey does look pretty nervous, Josh said. Mr. Paskey always looks nervous, Dink said back, looking around the room. He saw about 30 kids he knew. Mrs. Davis, Dink's neighbor, was looking at gardening books. Dink checked out the other grown-ups in the store. None of them looked like a famous mystery writer. Mr. Paskey stood up. Boys and girls, welcome to the book nook. Wallace Wallace should be here any second. How many of you have books to be autographed? Everyone waved a hand and book in the air. Wonderful, I'm sure Wallace Wallace will be happy to know that Greenlawn is, is a reading town. The kids clapped and cheered. Dink glanced at the clock. Five past 11. He swallowed, trying to stay calm. Wallace Wallace was late, but it was only by five minutes. Slowly, five more minutes passed. Dink felt his palms get damp. Where is Wallace Wallace? He wondered. Some of the kids started getting restless. Dink heard one kid say, whenever I'm late, I get grounded. So where is he? Josh asked. Ruth Rose looked at her watch. It's only 10 after, she said. Famous people are always late. Now Dink stared at the clock. A big hand jerked forward, paused, then wobbled forward again. At 11.15, Mr. Paskey stood up again. I don't understand why Wallace Wallace is late, he said. Dink noticed that his bald head was shiny with sweat. His bow tie was getting a workout. Mr. Paskey smiled bravely, but his eyes were blinking like crazy through his thick glasses. Sh shall we give him a few more minutes? The crowd grumbled, but nobody wanted to go anywhere. Ruth Rose started to read her book. Josh opened his sketch pad and began drawing Mr. Paskey. Dink turned and stared at the door. He mentally ordered Wallace Wallace to come through it. You have to come, thought Dink. Here's a picture for you guys. Ever since he had received Wallace Wallace's letter, he thought about only one thing, meeting him today. Suddenly, Dink felt his heart skip a beat. The letter! Short of being kidnapped, the letter said, nothing will stop me from coming. Kidnapped? Dink shook himself. Of course, Wallace Wallace hadn't been kidnapped. Mr. Paskey stood again, but this time he wasn't smiling. I'm sorry, kids, he said, but Wallace Wallace doesn't seem to be coming after all. The kids groaned. They got up, scraping chairs and bumping knees. Mr. Paskey apologized to them as they crowded past, heading for the door. I've read every single one of his books, Dink heard Amy Flower tell another girl. Now I'll probably never meet anybody famous. Ugh, I can't believe we gave up a soccer game for this, Tommy Tomko muttered to Eddie Carini on their way out. Ruth Rose and Josh went next, but Dink remained in his seat. He was too stunned to move. He felt the letter through his jeans, short of being kidnapped. Finally, Dink got up and walked out. Josh and Ruth Rose were waiting for him. What's the matter, Ruth Rose? You look sick. I am sick, Dink mumbled. I invited him here. It's all my fault. What's all your fault, Josh asked. This, he said, thrusting the letter into Josh's hands. Wallace Wallace has been kidnapped. Okay, readers, 
we know our big job today is to step into the crime solver's shoes and play detective. We want to figure out the mystery and pay attention to the clues and not just wait until the author tells us the solution. That's no fun. So today I'm going to teach you that we're going to pay attention to those story details that might be clues and then use those clues to help us figure out the mystery to predict the solution as we continue with our book. Then you'll get to try the same thing with your own mystery book.